Hello. Hello. I am waiting for my friend Kate. Here we go. Adding her. Live. Talking about love. Yay! Yay, we did it! We did it! Ooh, I like your glasses. Maybe I should put mine on. Uh, I need my reading glasses for anything phone related. <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah. No, I don't I don't know how it is at all. It's yeah. a lovely accessory. I love these that. are these are only for vanity purposes. I love glasses. It's like <laughs> I know, I do too. Change the story, you know, if you get nervous about it, then I'm not getting old. I just get another accessory. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so fun. I'm I'm getting, you know, more and more sexy with every pair of glasses I put on. <laughs> now through this, I might there, that's a little better with my my lighting so you can get me in there with eyes and everything. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. It. Yeah, it just made me decide, okay. Let's be twinsies. Yes, I love it. <laughs> Let's do that that little that little sexy librarian look, ladies. I know. This is what you can do on some of your Zoom date calls. Just put on a pair of glasses, switch it up. You might have to. I mean, like I literally, you know, did that too. Right in in the mix of both teaching this, I was doing it, and and in the dating, mm -hmm. and you know, I owned that I needed to see them through reading glasses. And you know what usually happens? The guy took a sigh of relief and grabbed his glasses saying, oh, thank you. <laughs> Literally, I'm allowed to be me. It's it's just beautiful to be genuine. It really, really is. It just gives, it like gives you an opening to just be authentic. And, and you know, it's like, and, and they're going to show up as a mirror of you anyway. So, so yeah. Good. So, so good. Well, Anyways, we're here talking about love, relationships, and the successful woman's guide to love. And Absolutely. So great having you featured, and our conversation was epic, in my opinion. Um, it really was. And, you know, let's give them a little sneak peek. Oh, yeah. I know you've already aired, but... Um, there, there's going to be a replay weekend. So if you haven't caught the successful woman's guide to love links in my bio side up, catch Kate. Cause we, we had a great conversation, you know, especially if you find yourself anxious around love, dating relationships, how to, you know, how to manage that feeling. Um, you know, we give you. We give you some really informative roadmaps on how to how to step into this confidently and and enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And really the confidence is in the taking the first step into the unknown. Yes. Think about your life. When you look, I mean we the, this is this is just like the rest of life and we kind of forget that sometimes. Mm -hmm. When you think back to growing up or make a big decision about a job or your first car or a relationship or going to college or any of that. It's stepping into an unknown, but being committed to a dream. Yes. Committed, you know, committed to a dream, committed to a vision. And, yeah. um, and, you know, there's always discomfort until you get used to it. It's kind of like riding a bike, anything new, right? <laughs> like that it, it's just, it's just staying open yeah. to that, you know, and being in the curiosity of it rather than being in the contraction energy of, oh, online dating sucks or, you know, <laughs> these things, but just being open to, um, to, to, and curious to what, yeah. what could open up. And I find that too, just, you know, a little trick, if you you get on a dating app, just being intentional with, I'm going to connect with some really amazing people, some beautiful yeah. souls. And 
that will start, you know, usually what you speak into will open up. And if you do the opposite, that will start to happen too, <laughs> right? I love that because it's so true. It's so true. Our, our, our intention and energy, that is the lens. I think this, we talked a little bit about this in our interview, which was yeah. the, the thoughts that go through our minds in the moment or those beliefs that are there all the time, whether we're conscious to it or not, are the lens that filter our eyesight and our experiences. Yeah. So if we're in that lens of there are no good men out there then you're going to get confirmation of that. Or if you start- Scammers, you're gonna get in and out or, and then you're gonna judge people that are just neutral that way too. And I, I call people for it all the time for that. Like they just, when they say, well, they just said hi, they didn't try. Like, yeah. Oh, what are you gosh, making you, this You mean? read my mind, you read my mind on this because <laughs> I feel like so many women get upset or judgy around around men that go, hi, how was your day? And they get upset going, oh, can't he do any better than that? What's All I know is if somebody's really that slick to be so smooth on the first sentence, that would be more of a yellow card red flag to me than they don't know what to say, but they have a big heart. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's like They're uncomfortable. Totally. They're and nervous. Even acknowledging the fact that I had somebody reach out to me and ask how my day was and receive that in kind. Yeah. Yeah. And then that can open up the door to so much connection. Oh gosh, I feel, I feel so cared for that you yeah. asked how my day was. And here's the thing, <laughs> you, we, we as women get to show up in responsibility to that. If yeah. I need to say fine, like really think about what you're saying back are you do? Is there a game you're unconsciously playing, trying to get him to prove he likes you because something in you doesn't believe you're likable? Because that's what happens when you're waiting for them to put in. Yes, they get to put in the effort, but when you're not even showing up to to be in lightheartedness, or if you're holding some sort of wall about your response until they open up, like here's the thing that men are desiring most of all is to experience women who are open and light and free and delighted in life. Yes. So be in that energy because men don't get that in the work world and their world normally. They're competitive. They play sports that are competitive. They're competitive in, in the masculine world of business. I mean, there's some, some softness and lightness that they like just relieves them. And then that's them escape from that normalcy of life when they're in the presence of a woman who's delighted and lighthearted. Now that doesn't mean you're, you're um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? You're not flighty, you're not like ditzy. It means you're a present human being and you're in the conversation and you're gonna share something vulnerably. You know, if he says, how was your day? And maybe it was tough, you go, you know, actually, normally my days are pretty awesome, but today was kind of tough. Yeah, be, be real, be yeah. you. And it's, it opens up a conversation and opens it up like, uh, and I think I shared this a little bit in our conversation too. It's like, as, as the feminine, we're actually the emotional leaders in relationship. Mm. And there's a lot of confusing love advice out there that says, wait for him to lead. Well, we actually inspire his leadership by our vision. So mm. you are, you know, emotionally leading in your communication, then he'll, and and you're open like that energy comes through on a dating app yeah it, it it'll open him up now if you have if the guy just responds flatly like oh <laughs> or okay maybe you want to move forward maybe you want to you know keep going that's okay yeah. um, it's just in not taking what anybody does or doesn't do personally. Well, even with that, you can even add to that, which is even more vulnerable, but it's true. But vulnerability, again, doesn't have to be pain, uh, uh, a weakness. It's a superpower in that you are allowing yourself to be seen without fear of whatever response is happening, because simply being like putting yourself out there and seeing, you don't make a meaning of what's coming back to you. So even in that, it could have been, it's a tough day. 
I, I didn't really realize how much I needed to hear someone say, how are you? So thank you for that. It really supported me. Yeah. That and gives that's, somebody, if that's even more vulnerable, right? And that drops into what you're truly feeling. So, mm. oh, so really connecting with yourself and how you're truly feeling before the response. Yeah. And taking it that next step, it just, it mm. opens up the energy to a beautiful connection. And what that also does is say, wow, I wasn't even trying to make her happy. I mean, there is some peace in that, that like bringing joy to women, right? There's a joy to wanting to provide comfort and happiness and, and support their, them making their lives happy. But there's a win for him to feel safe, to lean in and be vulnerable too. And when we've had so many experiences, men and women of being hurt, Men sometimes are a little more hesitant, especially if we're older. They're not the same as totally. when they were 22. Come on, not at all. Their hearts, they desire. And, and, and I think a lot of times, you know, erring to what you were sharing earlier about, you know, if, if you're just looking for him to, it's almost like you're looking for him to entertain you and show up with, with, you know, almost like virtual flowers before yeah. he even knows you when it's simply making a connection yeah. and um and just opening that i always say this to my women it's just you're opening the door for yeah. him you're and here's the thing the that women miss is men open the door for us to lean into vulnerability all the time and we yeah. see it as an affront or it activates a fear rather than an opportunity to share something we value. And that's the only way that a man can truly know who you are and that you stand for and are passionate about and are committed to who you are, your values. If you don't take those windows of opportunity to be vulnerably open and share that. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And, and it's even by opening a dating app, it, there's so many opportunities to do that and practice from a detached place yeah. and, you know, being in the play of it, you'll, I mean, you could spend 10, 15 minutes on an app and leave with, you know, a couple of video chats scheduled a day, you know, who knows? It doesn't uh, have to take many back and forths when you lean into the vulnerability and and not being not doing it in a way that if I if I'm oh if I share this vulnerably then it'll make him want to respond that's still with an expectation there's some yeah that's what trying to attack. navigate and and yeah yeah you know so we gotta cut that out and it's not to play a game like you literally are just looking for opportunities to yeah. share honestly something you care about and that. Wow, like if, if somebody's saying, how is your day? If you're a honey, when you finally have the man of your dreams, how is your day? And you go, and you just know you can fall in his arms for a big hug going, it was rough. And you get to let yourself receive that connection of recognition. Then you get to do this here too. Like you have to like allow yourself that. And so it's being honest about what you want to share about yourself and be honest what you're sharing in that vulnerable place. But that's the superpower. That's that's where men want to see and say, okay, I'd say for me to be me and share me with you. Yeah. And and that's what opens, you know, just like you shared, but that's what opens up the deep connection that yeah. as women we're we all desire. You know, I hear it from women all the time. How do I get consistent intimacy and we're not just talking about in the bedroom right we're talking about into me you see how do i create that you can easily create it by you know just sharing a little bit of your heart i you know it this i remember a couple of weeks ago i was having a little breakdown um I don't know why, but there, I do know why, but I, I'm kind of being sarcastic a little bit. Um, I had a lot of things going on and there's just this break that happened. And I 
you know, went to, you know, went out, took a little walk in the living room, <laughs> took a walk out of my office into the living room. And I, you know, saw my guy there and I was just like, man, this is rough. And I just, tears started pouring down my face and I was like, do you believe in me? And he was like, oh my gosh, of course. And, <laughs> and it just, and it opened up the door to share what was, you know, what was happening. And, um, you know, you don't have to get to a point of a breaking point, but when you're in relationship, there's that safe place to be able to share and it's not just confined there it's now we joke around about it all the time like yeah. he'll put his arms around my shoulders he's like i believe in you <laughs> and we kind of laugh about it um <laughs> but it's it's being you know it's being open to that rather than i think a lot of times women were so used to being in masculine mode and oh, really? fixing, nurturing, even, you know, so oftentimes proving energy. So, but when you can relax into yourself, your feelings and opening that up, like that's really where the nectar is. Yeah. Connection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause you know, you have no, there, there's a, there's a presence that like we get to have where we are sharing and imparting ourselves and we're opening up that. And I gotta say time and time again, I know you have this too, when you have your clients working with you that time and time again, after uh, first chats on, on apps or first date or meet and greet coffee, that the women that we work with, they come back to us and the feedback is men say, Oh my God, we actually had a conversation. I didn't feel like I was in a job interview. Yes. Yes. And I, All the time. Like I had, I, we had so much fun and, and like the, the, they, they, I always invite them, like, look at the beautiful soul in front of you and get curious from that perspective. And instead of, you know, a lot of times women might try to make a decision, especially if she's, you know, she's dating, you know, dating abundantly or, you know, in that place of filling up her man funnel, which we, we might coach you guys to do a little bit. And, you know, if she's, especially if she's dating one person that she really likes, she might try to shut it down, you know, shut everybody else down. But when we invite that opening, they get in the habit of just having great connections. And it's, it's so fun. I, I love hearing about it. And you get to listen for the things that are in alignment with you since, rather than if I know that a lot of the women I work with go through the what's wrong with me mm -hmm. that I threw this to me rather than seeing the things that were fabulous like wow this this man he has a vision that's not my vision but oh my gosh he's clear on it and he's clear about wanting a partner to share that with and he has a big heart that wants to share whatever it could be but you know it's not your vision instead of being um, how that how'd that happen and all that energy that right exactly. like being in the gratitude space of what the is connection he's so in yeah rather than having needing it to be perfectly aligned it's yeah. okay if it's not it's like oh i learned that his vision is to you know move to ecuador and go i don't know yeah know, or Ex explore the peace corps over there i don't know Could yeah. be anything, right which well, may not be aligned with where you're at and that's okay and I love that too, because it really allows people to, and women to see differently. Like I, I get to connect, I get to have a connected no. Yes. So much fear about how to like, and I work with a lot of women who mm, maybe empathically feel like they don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. So they don't speak their truth or they hedge or they freeze or any number of things happen versus connecting in the know and saying, wow, I acknowledge this, this, and this, and see these beautiful things. And 
that's so not my dream. And I'm so excited for you to find that. And I know it's not with me. And that's a way of le letting them know you see them. Yeah. Appreciate and, them. And, and, and it's great for me. And yeah. that's It's, I, you know, we, we definitely work with a similar crowd of yeah. women that, that definitely, you know, they don't, they don't want to hurt someone. They, they, um, and I think that, you know, that can open up its own, you know, own blocks because a lot of times women will stop themselves from actually meeting someone because they have fear that it's going to be a no and they don't want to hurt that person. But realizing that, you know, when you get out of your own way and you can move that aside, realize that he's doing the same thing as you. He's sifting and he's, he's, he's meeting people for, for the same reason. And it's a first meeting. It's, it's a meet and greet. Yeah. Them. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's so great because it's just, even if you're on maybe three or four dates and it becomes clear, it's not mm -hmm. a right fit it's to a have no. a yeah. conversation. And I know men and women both don't do that well. And that's where the quote ghosting and all these things. But I feel like I've been, I've had so many conversations with clients too, that tell me the response that they had when a man tried to speak with them and it wasn't necessarily um grounded right it was an activated energetic fear-based response that was really could come you know it's a power move with anger to feel powerful feeling powerless because of something they believe about themselves that's drawing them to say that when in fact there could be a wonderful wonderful like way to approach that if we all just you know our if if we started creating better responses that were kind so thank you for telling me yeah i and and just being in that receivership yeah. and and allowing those feelings to move through you of any disappointment feeling those feelings letting them go and transmuting that this is so important into oh this is evidence that my man is coming this is evidence that my man is on his on his way the universe is getting this one out of the way and and the good news is is the universe got this out of my way quickly and i got to connect with somebody amazing and maybe you even tried a new restaurant that you've always wanted to i mean like there's always there's always gratitude and a silver lining in connections. I, yeah. I really believe. I love it. Okay, because I, I have a question for you about. I've been hearing this has just come up recently, and I think it's a safety thing. And I wonder what you think of this too. Like yeah. the idea of the zero date. It's a zero. Like they're calling it not the first date. There's some safe. So I don't know where this is coming. There's some somebody's sharing this on a blog or a Reddit or a Medium article. So we're calling this a zero date. It's not really a first date. It's a meet and greet. But it's so interesting that there's a, like, it counts. That's my opinion. It, it counts. A zero date. You can't even know what the hell That's a zero date means. Like, like, well, if I don't count it as a date, then I can't be hurt by it. Like, what does that mean? Has anybody else heard that? I'd love to know if people have heard that too out here watching. Yeah, because I feel like it's anybody out there out there hear, hear the zero date? No, I, yeah. I mean, what that means or if they thought that like where that's come from, because I'm just intrigued because when I hear it, I think, wow, you know, you have to take a risk into the unknown to go meet somebody. Now, it doesn't have to mean your life is threatened risk. That's not the risk. It's the emotional risk and us leaning in to be vulnerable. And when we discredit it with not counting it, it's non-existent. That's what zero means. Yes. Where can that possibly? we go in trust for yourself much less with somebody else yeah, so interesting. I, I, it is interesting <laughs> i feel like that that doesn't really make sense i mean there's so many ways i and i feel like that's just another way for people to try to weed out connections without being really invested in their yeah. own journey and i also think that I mean, there's, you can easily do a first meet and greet or phone call, chat. I mean, they have on, you know, all online apps, 
they have a video chat option. So you could just do a quick video chat with somebody and, and connect. Yes. Connection gets to count no matter how it happens. Yeah. You're, you're cheating yourself out of the opportunity to be vulnerable and have the possibility of something blossoming. There's an energy when there's that like, oh, I'm protecting myself from what that means if this is a real date. <laughs> yeah. Versus I getting that pattern of what, what the reason that is landing for people, the zero date, is because something underneath or a belief that's been there for a while, and it's still going to be there whether you believe in zero dates or not, and right. use that, that's going to keep the protection up in some way to not open up, yeah. to not be vulnerable. Yeah, we call that a love shield, right? Yeah. Like, a, in a, it's unpenetrable. <laughs> yes. Use your words, Cindy. Um, <laughs> Good. Yeah, the, that shield. And and if you're, you know, if you're a woman that's that's on here, that's listening to us, and you're looking to create a connection with someone that is healthy, that desires, um, you know, a, a long-term committed relationship, if you have that shield up, they feel right through that and they don't waste their time with, with that kind of energy. I mean, they will literally even if they can't identify exactly what it is, they'll, they'll move away from it because they're really looking for that connectable woman that they have a chance at winning with and yeah. showing up for. Good. So Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. incredible. Yeah. So good. So good. We can talk about this stuff all day. All day. Ah, I know. I just learned <laughs> okay. something new. The zero date. I know, I know people, I bet there's gonna be some folks commenting because it's, I've been hearing it and like, it must be out on a blog or medium or one of those, one of those uh, very prop, pop, popular um, sites memes going on. And I'm just like, wow. So it's just, yeah, so we got to have that, like, it'll be fun to see what people say and what their feelings are around that. And hopefully yeah. the support's a little to just question, like, get curious, what feels safe about that for you? What feels not safe about calling it a date? Because the reality is that story is the more important thing to focus on than just putting this other label on something for temporary safety when you actually want to feel safe and there's something underneath, right? Absolutely. Well said. Well <laughs> said. So good. Um, well, this was fun. Yeah. So, so good chatting with you. you. Yeah. Um, yay. So everybody join us on the successful yeah. woman's guide to love link in bio if you haven't joined yet there is a lot of golden nuggets of information free resources lots of gifts daily and we're heading into almost the weekend i can't believe it and free open replay time so it'll be fun love it okay. so good Yay! Well, thanks for being here. Until thanks next for being time. Wonderful. Okay. Bye. Thanks.